Be doing some casting of sterling silver parts that I need for a pistol and a rifle that I'm building, and uh, we're doing this through a, a green sand mold casting process. Uh, green sand means basically the sand is damp; it hasn't been baked, um, and it's just a mixture of uh, sand, uh, some sort of binding clay, such uh, as you can get in hardware stores, um, and Water. In this case, I'm using Petrobond, which actually has, instead of water, it's a, an oil binder added to the material. Uh, bentonite is your most common clay used mixed with the sand, and there's different formulas out there, different ideas that work best, but basically it's about 85% uh, sand to about 15% uh, bentonite. Uh, it's mixed up wet and you want it to a consistency where, where you take a handful of it and do this number with it and crush it. You don't have sand sticking to your hand and it does hold its form well and when it's broken it bro breaks cleanly in half. Uh, it's, it's a very precise consistency you have to get for it to work properly. Uh, if it's too wet the mold will pack well even though the sand wants to stick together nicely it'll stick to everything that's in there too and you can't get your patterns out of the mold without breaking out all sorts of stuff if it's too dry it won't pack neatly to begin with so there, there is a bit of a, a experience that comes along with this I've been casting this way for about 25 years now and every time I do it it's still a learning process because there's so many things you have to think about as you go along so uh, anyways, let's get into this and uh, we'll try and have some fun and hopefully uh, at the end of the video we'll have some pieces I can actually use. Alright, first thing we have to do is pack the uh, bottom half of this mold with the sand. Uh, this is some commercial stuff called Petrobond. Basically, a, a nice sand with clay in it, and then it's got uh, petro meaning oil, so there's an oil binder to it. Yeah, I just used this sand earlier today to cast a trigger guard, so it's got some lumps in it, but for what I need to do, it's fine. Just kind of break up the worst of them. down in the edges a little bit. If you look closely you'll see there's a ridge of wood in here that uh, keeps the sand in the mold. The last thing you want is the sand to fall out when you separate the molds. using the uh, narrow edge of the mallet to beat it down. That way I've got ridges left for the next layer to bind to. I'm trying to pound it too smooth and then the uh, layers tend to separate. Sand is pretty good stuff. I like using it. You don't have to worry about it drying out. In the old days they used basically just the sand mixed with clay and then you use water as a binder which of course dries out and you have to add water to it each time 
and it takes about a day for it to get to the right consistency. If you take some of this stuff, you can see how it molds nicely and breaks apart pretty cleanly. And that's what you want. Generally when you're packing a mold, if you're doing a, a lot of the same pattern, you use what's called a matchboard. Let me get one of those here real quick. This is a matchboard, and you can see there's cutouts for the two trigger guards on this pattern. So you set them in there and then clamp the half your mold to this, pack in it with the of course the trigger guards in place and that gives you the first half then you flip it over remove this pack the second half and that makes sure it's they stay in place and just gives you a lot cleaner mold when you're done no chance for it to break out as much this off, get it nice and smooth. You can't see it but my bucket's right down here that I've got all the sand in so it just goes right back in. thing is is that when you're melting the metal down it takes about an hour to an hour and a half depending on how much you've got in your flask so you can actually be melting the metal while you're packing the mold or if you got two people it works even better One person can be doing the melting and the other packing. Okay. Looks pretty good. Now since this is just a one-off mold and this is the trigger guard I'm going to do, I'm actually going to cast this one in silver for a fowler I need to build. So we just lay it on there so that we got 
pretty well centered. You want to tap it in about half the thickness. That way your points will be even with the level of the sand. nice thing is, since this is a casting I'm working from, I've got a parting line on it that I can use to judge the center. So that's pretty close. Now we need to dust this. And talcum powder, baby powder, something like that. Basically it's just the powder that keeps the two layers of sand from sticking to each other. Now the two halves of the mold or what they call a flask one's called the cope and one's called the drag. Don't ask me why and don't ask me which one this is. really doesn't matter. I just go by half and half. Alright, that's pretty good. Got a good coating on there. Now, I had this clamped to the baseboard so that it wouldn't shift around or the flash start to rise up as I'm pounding down. Now you put the top half on, and the pins that line up, and then I use a little bit bigger clamp. need to over tighten. Basically just enough to keep it from shifting. Now this step I want to make sure the, the sand I use to pack this is going to be nice and smooth and it'll pack in all the little corners. So I'm going to sift it through this screen. So I got a nice fine sand and no lumps. try and pack lumpy sand in there, you end up with gaps around the edges of the pattern. The finer sand will pack in nice and tight. See how that's sifting through there nice and nice and fine. layer of that on top of the part you're casting. Then you can start packing in the lump lumpy stuff. Trying to be careful not to shift things around too much because that nice fine sand to uh, work away from the pattern. Pack it 
first layer of enamel. layer on top of the pattern, I'll back down a little harder, concentrating on the area where the pattern is. Discolorations you might notice in the sand is white stuff and sometimes black. That's the powder from the previous casting I did. And it'll get mixed in. Don't have to worry about it too much. It would help if I had some sort of mixer to rotate this stuff, sort of like a big uh, cement mixer. It's what they call mulling the sand breaking up all the big stuff.
and <coughs> excuse me, now we got to open the mold. Let's see how this came out. Tap around the sides a little bit to make sure that two halves come apart neatly. I'm kind of in a hurry on this, so hopefully it'll come out fine. Lift gently and straight up. Looks pretty good. So there's one half. There's the other half. Just minor breakout on the edges, which is typical. Blow away all the loose crap. Now, what I want to do is cut channels for the middle to flow in of the gates. What I use for that is just a, a piece of thin steel bent around into a, a sort of a scoop shape. And I can use this to run lines with it. pretty good channel and I go extra long on either end so that any sand that might be falling in as I'm pouring will get blown to the edges or to the ends. Now I want to make sure that the sprues on the pattern are connected to the gate. Took it a little too far on the end here. Because you really don't want the metal going up against your flask. That'll cause it to burn a bit, so you want a little bit of insulation in there. So you just go back and pack a little bit in. Now we need a way to pour the metal in. So I've got a piece of real thin brass tubing and I choose a spot. Yeah, we'll go right here. Yeah. Yeah. And you just run that down in there, twist it at the back end, pull it up, and you got a little hole there. So you can see that hole going in there. Now when we flip it over, there's the back side. And what I want to do now is very carefully cut out a countersunk area that the metal can be poured into, sort of like a funnel. I'm going to do this on edge because it's just easier If you 
you're using what's called green sand, which is the sand, clay, and water mixture, you would need to put some vent holes in there too. Little 16th inch holes that allow gas to escape. But the nice thing about Petrobond is that you really don't need to do that because there's enough porosity to allow the steam to escape naturally. Pack it in a little bit with your finger. Now we've got a sprue and a gate to combine together. Now comes the fun part. Got to take this out without breaking up too much sand around it. So tap it to loosen it until I see it's wiggling good. And I can feel it wiggling nicely. Trigger guards usually you have problems with breakout, especially inside the bow area or any tight curves like these. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. So you just want to wiggle it back and forth a little bit. There. Got a little break out there. But that's fine. It's on the back side. And of course that will all get cleaned up later. Alright, so we've got the two halves of the mold. I'll check something here. Sure that back half went halfway down. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. Make sure there's no loose debris. Put it back together carefully. And you want to clamp it in place lightly too at this point. When you're casting, when the metal flows in, the two halves tend to want to separate. You can either put heavy weights around the edges, some bar iron or something, but I like just using clamps. Clamps situated so that are not in the way of the when I pour the metal in. All right, so that's packing a mold. Next step for me will be to melt the silver and pour it in and see what we got. All right, so you guys hang on and we'll see what happens next.